COVID has affected my industry in a huge way. Um, I basically haven't worked in a year. Um, there was a little brief moment in December where I was really busy for three weeks and I was really excited. I thought we were back in the swing of things and then obviously Cyril spoke and then events were shut down again. So to be honest with you, it is basically non-existent at the moment. So me being me, I can't sit still. I have to be busy and I have to be active. So from day one of lockdown, I have been doing charity work for a charity called Masadi Gives Back um, in Tafelsuch, Mitchell's Plain, which is one of the most dangerous locations in South Africa. Um, very, a lot of gang violence. Um, it's a lot of underprivileged people. Um, we started off, well, the founder, Shanaz Ali, um, she started off by just feeding a couple of uh, children, like 50 to 100, from a soup kitchen, from a kitchen on a Monday with her own profits. And then she phoned me and she started crying, she said, how am I going to feed the children? I put my head into overdrive and started thinking, how are we going to be able to feed these children? And so I got a, I was very fortunate, thank God, I got a charity permit and um, I could drive wherever I wanted to. I drove the, like, the roads of Cape Town with not a single person in sight, no traffic officer, no cop. Drove through Red Robots, shouldn't be saying this on TV, but I did. And um, we now feed 40,000 people a month. We have got a soccer team, which is endorsed by uh, Digital Express, which I bought on board. And um, these little eight-year-old children have never, ever um, been outside of Mitchell's Plain. And now we have an amazing guide called Stuart, who um, is basically taking these children outside Mitchell's Plain into the suburban areas, uh, playing a football soccer against like privileged children and they are winning all the matches, like one up, they haven't actually lost a single match, they are incredible. So the soccer is incredible because it keeps these children off the streets, keeps them away from drugs, from um, gangsterism, um, it's um, something exciting for them because they get to get out of their location and out of their comfort zone, like it's so exciting for them to go to seat point, to go to table view, and um, it's an amazing just to see their faces when they and, and they're winning against like the privileged children, which is incredible. And there's a lot of drug addiction and um, abuse, physical and um, emotional abuse. There's um, alcoholism. There's a lot of uh, violence. People beating each other up. And um, so I've got a huge project on my hands there. I've got an amazing uh, trauma and addictions counselor called Mark who assists me, but the problem is these people don't have phones or access to Wi-Fi, let alone Zoom. And unfortunately, NA and AA are only doing their meetings on Zoom. So there's a huge demand for that at the moment. So I'm trying to do something out there that like helps people in these circumstances. Um, it's really nice and refreshing for me because I'm known as this glamorous queen that's only on the red carpet and hanging out with the rich and famous and right in Tafels of which was playing I get to be myself and I love it there. I mean, I'm part of the family um, I'm known as Queen of Tafels of um, fearless the people you've touched my heart Just generally speaking like they are family to me. I could consider them family but I have a very soft spot for people with addiction problems, um, alcoholism, people who um, experienced um, violence, um, abuse, physical, emotional abuse. Um, I'm told not to get so involved in people's lives all the time by the founder of the organization. You get too involved, you get too emotional, but it's unfortunately something I'm so passionate about that um, I can't let it go and I, 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 it's like my responsibility, I feel, to help those who've been in a similar situation to me that have experienced similar heartaches and things to me. So I've really got a, a huge amount of knowledge when it comes to those subjects and so that's why I reach out and I try to help people as best as I can because if the grown-ups are like contained and looked after and sober and doing well, the children will be looked after. If the grown-ups, if we're looking after the children just and the parents are behaving like children and 
being abusive and drinking and taking drugs and tuck and all kinds of things, then the children are going to suffer. So I focus on like helping the grown-ups and then getting, but it's, it's very difficult. I mean, you've got no NA or AA meetings anymore. It's all on Zoom and they don't have computers. They don't have, some of them don't have phones. They don't, they borrow phones. It's very difficult for me to organize. Um, with um, the, the amazing guy that we've got who is um, working as a counsellor for trauma and addiction. So I'm doing the best I possibly can, but that is a major passion project for me. I've actually been working for the charity for close on three years. So people thought when I first started the charity in day one of lockdown, oh, Marina's doing it for publicity, she's exploiting the children. I had a lot of backlash in the beginning and after four months when they realized I was still doing it and I was driving around the peninsula, picking up clothes, shoes, everything I could, raising funds, um, then they stopped, like all of a sudden. We have done a fashion show, which um, we, House of Fashion is one of my sponsors there. I'm the brand ambassador. They gave us 66,000 rands worth of children's clothing. So I decided to do a fashion show. I organized a 22 meter red carpet, which was put on the street in Tafelsuch with bricks. Obviously, you know, we've got no budget, so we have to work with what we've got. And that was uh, sponsored by Petals Group, which is one of my uh, suppliers for events. We had a Miss Masadi um, pageant, beauty pageant, and I managed to get, it was also on Women's Day, so I got uh, Desiree Ann Martin, a friend of mine, who went to school with me, who's now an award-winning author, and got a doctorate at Fitz, Fitz University and UCT. But she was a sex worker, intravenous uh, drug addict, abused as a child, um, gang raped, I mean, it is alcoholism, every drug on the, um, that you can think of, but her main drug of choice was obviously heroin, intravenously, and she wrote an award-winning book, which is incredible. So she came to be the guest speaker to inspire these women who come from the most terrible backgrounds that you can possibly imagine. So I think out the box we did a gala dinner end of last year, and we did an event at the old age uh, home, um, which is basically for, um, I don't know how else to explain this, but it's for poor whites and poor coloreds who have been abandoned by their families. And um, so we did a Christmas event for them. We got some amazing goodie bags um, sponsored by Catrice through my friend Cindy Nell, ex Miss South Africa and owner of Catrice Cosmetics. They did the goodie bags. And we fed them an incredible Christmas lunch. We had entertainment, dancing, music, everything. So my passion lies in charity at the moment because it gives me something to do, it keeps me busy and active. And um, while I wait for this doom and gloom, horror scenario of basically being unemployed at the moment um, to, so, to, to pass on. Um, so yes, the charity has saved my life and it's humbled me and I get to be the real Marina and not the Marina with the mask that I have to put, put on because at the end of the day, with over 14,000 people on your database, you, you, you have to be realistic. These are not your friends. They are your database and this is a job and a career that I have obviously didn't choose, but I, it chose me, I would say. And um, so I've got to be careful how I behave, what I say, and um, there's a lot of pressure being in the media and being in the limelight. So I have to, uh, when I get to Mitchell's plane, I can just completely like let go and dance like a fool in the middle of the street to their music and um, play with the children. And yeah, I'm actually a board member, which I'm super proud of at the moment. And yeah, and we'll see what the future holds in events and PR. I am keeping my, my options open to possibly getting out there into the job market again, um, which is extremely scary at age 43. And um, yeah, and then of course I do all this, I, I became a full-blown model at the age 43 during lockdown, which is the most hysterical thing ever. Um, designers and photographers and makeup artists were just contacting me and going, come let's play, let's shoot. And we, of course, I'm endorsed by some fabulous designers like Errol Ahrens, um, House of Fashion, uh, Coco Dakota, which I'm wearing right now. We're doing a shoot for them today. Um, uh, Warwick Gutierrez, Gavin Raja, um, 
Hugo Boss, um, Tommy Hilfiger. I'm extremely fortunate with the type of uh, brands that have sponsored me over the years. And so they get a lot of uh, publicity through doing these shoots. And then I'm got, I mean, this most incredible location from Jean-Marc Lederman, who is going to be photographing me today. He is one of the top photographers um, globe, internationally. He's French, he's done Sports Illustrated. He's an architect, an interior designer, and we've got this beautiful venue in Lindadno where we're gonna do a bikini shoot, which I'm slightly nervous about at my age, so let's hope it goes well. We've gotta start shooting now, so I've gotta go. Thank you so much for listening.